What we try to do in the lab, our main focus is to try to understand how the disease happened and then try to develop strategies to stop that process before it produces substantial damage in the brain. We study diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia with Lewy body, multiple system atrophy, and Parkinson. The seed amplification assay is something we've been working for many years. What we do basically is to take from the biological fluids. If the patient has these abnormal proteins, we use them as a seed because this is what they do in the brain. They seed, they make more of themselves. So we use them as, as a seed, we give them the normal protein as a, a substrate, and then the process goes on. The breakthrough is that in the brain, this takes decades to, to be done. In the lab, we devise a way to do it in a few hours. One of the pathological hallmarks of Parkinson's disease is the accumulation of the alpha-synuclein protein in the brain. Up until now, we've never been able to detect pathological alpha-synuclein in living people. Claudio's assay is changing all of that. Hey, Samantha. It's so good to good see, to see you, you, Claudio. Good to see you in Houston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for Great. having me. Yeah, I haven't awesome. seen you in some time. The funding from the Maggie Fox Foundation was instrumental to be able to catalyze all this process. They gave us several grants in, uh, over the last 10 years and uh, who have been critical for us to develop this technology. So these are the publications from your lab? Yeah, some of them, yeah. This is the one I remember when I first read this. Yes. I had just started at the foundation. I was reading Claudio's paper about uh, A-beta-42, which is this protein that clumps up in Alzheimer's disease. And as I was reading it, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if this investigator could do something similar for alpha-synuclein? I turned to my colleague sitting next to me and I said, well, what do we do next? And she said, well, call him and we'll just, we'll, we'll see if he wants a grant. <laughs> I never get a call from a foundation asking me, why don't you, you know, think about working on this area? So, I mean, that tells me that they are very intimately involved in the research. One grant turned into another grant, turned into another grant. He developed an alpha-synuclein seed amplification assay. We worked together to optimize it, and ultimately we were able to test Claudio's biomarker assay in PPMI, which is the Fox Foundation's flagship biomarker cohort. And this is the first big paper where we showed that your assay in the PPMI samples was really sensitive and specific for being able to detect Parkinson's. To have the support of Michael J. Fox Foundation, to have the support of the FDA saying that this is an important discovery that can really produce a change on the way that we identify Parkinson's disease. It's very, very important. So let me show you why we do most of the SAA stuff. What I love about Claudio is that he never gives up. This wasn't going to be an easy task to develop a biomarker for alpha-synuclein, but he kept trying and incentivized other groups to also want to work on seed amplification assays. And he's been a mentor and a leader in this field since we first started working together. So this is what you use for the seed amplification yes. assay, purified protein. Right, exactly. It helps a lot for development of clinical trials because, you know, when you, when you have, say you're a company and you have a molecule that block alpha-synuclein aggregation, you want to be sure that the patients you are treating, they really have alpha-synuclein aggregation in the brain. The other thing that has actually changed in the field also is that based on the seed amplification technology, now we can detect very early the disease process before it's clinical. And that's our final protein is alpha-synuclein, and we use that to run plates. I always tell the people in my lab, the most important thing is the responsibility of moving what you learn, what you develop in your lab, into something that can be actually used for patients. We selected Claudio for the Pritzker Prize this year because of his leadership in developing what has become the most influential molecular biomarker for Parkinson's disease. This is critical not just for patients and caregivers and clinicians, but also for clinical trialists. Using this biomarker will enable us to enroll the right patients into these trials and set them up for success. It means a lot to me to have the Robert A. Pritzker Prize for Leadership in Parkinson Research. It's a big recognition. It's, uh, it's a real honor. This type of unrestricted uh, funds are very, very important to go into these uh, highly innovative ideas, ideas that will make a big impact in the field. In the future, what we would like to have is a panel of tests that will monitor brain health, be able to identify all the proteins that can go wrong in the brain early on in biological fluid. It's very, very important to be able to go to the next step, which is 
as fast as possible for the benefit of patients.